In this tutorial, I'll be going through the process of loading your image files into Photoshop and then creating a basic animation that you will ultimately be able to export as a GIF. If you're not familiar with how to extract the files from your video source, I have another tutorial about a program called Snapmotion that explains some basics about frame rates and how you go about deciding what frame rates to use with your with, with particular sources. But for this tutorial, I'll be using caps that I extracted from a 24 frame per second clip at every second frame. Since this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial, we're not going to worry about things like the number of frames or the eventual size of the GIF. But I want to just briefly go through Tumblr's image dimensions and maximum file size for images because ultimately that's what you'll be working towards when you're making your GIFs. When I started making GIFs, the maximum file size for images on Tumblr was 3 megabytes. It's now 5 megabytes, which is a pretty significant increase. Your dashboard on Tumblr displays single images at a fixed width of 540 pixels. You can also post images in rows of two or three. If you have two images side by side, they will both have a width of 268 pixels. And if you have three images side by side, two of them will have a width of 177 pixels and one of them will have a width of 178 because 540 isn't evenly divisible by three. If you upload images that don't conform to this width dimension, they'll be stretched or shrunk to fit. So I recommend making your GIFs at these exact sizes the way that they'll be displayed because I find GIFs in particular don't shrink well, especially if they have text on them. They just don't look good at all and nothing looks good when it's been stretched. Once you've opened Photoshop, go to File, then go to Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack. From this Load Layer screen, click on Browse, and then um, if you're once you're in the folder where you've located your image files, you just want to select all of the files that you want to include into your GIF. So I've got 40 here. Then click on Open. You can then scroll down in this little box and just make sure that you've clicked on all of them and then say okay. What happens now is that Photoshop will open each individual image and then insert it into this single file as a layer. So each individual cap that you've taken from your clip is now a layer in this one file. The first thing I usually do now is I resize the image. Since I'm just making this as a single GIF, um, I want to make it in a large size, so I'm going to resize it to a width of 540 pixels. So to do that, go to image, image size, and then enter 540. Make sure your width and height um, dimensions are linked so that the height is proportional. So then just say OK. OK, so this is the size that my potential GIF is going to be right now. Now I want to save it. Now go to Window, go to Timeline. This is the area where you'll create your frame animation and then your video. Now you need to get your layers over here so that you can make them an animation. So click Create Frame Animation. Now you've got your first layer in a frame, but you want the rest of them. So click on this icon and then go to Make Frames from Layers. Now you have all of your layers in individual frames. So as you can see, there are 40 and we have 40 layers. And if you want to look at each of them separately, you can do that. But let me just show you here. Uh, as you can see, layer number one is in frame number 40. 
That's because when Photoshop loads your image files, it loads them backwards. So it starts out with the very last one and then goes up to the first, which makes sense because that's really how you want them to appear in your layer stack. But what the effect of that is here in, the, um, in terms of frames is that they're backwards. In order to put them in the correct order, we go back to this menu and click on reverse frames. Now, as you can see, frame 40 corresponds with image 40. And if we go back up to there, we can see that frame one corresponds to, Im to image one or layer one, which is what we wanted. Down here on the bottom left are your controls. This is obviously the play button. This takes you to the next frame, this one takes you to the previous frame, and this one takes you all the way back to the first frame. This menu is your looping. We want it on forever. You can select from other presets or you can click on other, but uh, for our purposes, we want it to be on forever. If we just play this now, you can see that it is in the right order, but it's really fast. And that's because we have not nominated um, any frame delay between the frames. You can nominate the frame delay on an individual frame by clicking down the bottom where it says zero sec. That brings up the menu and you have a number of presets here, or you can click on other and type in like whatever fraction or full second you want. But to select the frame delay for all of them at the same time, click on this menu again and go to select all frames. And this time, if you click on the bottom of one of them here, it comes up and you can select it for all of them. Now, if I let's go back to the very first frame, if I click on play now, you can see that it's slowed down and it actually looks too slow now. In this frame animation timeline, it's going to look slower than in the video timeline. This is how you, you check and make sure that you've got them the right frame delay speed. So to get to the video timeline, you click down here in the bottom left and you, it actually converts it to video you can see that you've got basically the same controls as you had in the frame animation screen, plus a few others that we don't need to get to right now. So each of these layers in your video timeline is your image plus the frame delay. When I click on play now, we can see that the image is faster and it looks smooth and more like the normal speed that you would see a video. When I'm happy with my frame delay speed in the video timeline, I go back to my frame timeline, frame animation timeline. You can do that two ways. The first way is just to undo it. Um, you can also click on this icon down here that will convert it back to frame animation, but I'm just gonna undo it right now. Ordinarily, I like to crop my images a little more, partly because I prefer the way it looks but also because reducing the dimensions of your images is going to reduce the size of your GIF file. And that's always a good thing when you're dealing with limits. So the way that I usually do it is with the crop tool. I choose width by height by resolution. And usually I have presets from the last time I, I worked on something. So my last preset was 540 pixels, which is what I have now, and it was 290. Um, I will stick with that because I don't really want to cut off too much of Vic's head in this. And the resolution is 72 pixels per inch, which if you are unsure, you can always check down here where the dimensions are. So this is 72 pixels per inch, so they match, which is great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and it defaults to cropping the center of the image. I usually just try that out. So I click on the tick and then I just want to run it through to see if there are any spots where 
it looks weird, like I've chopped the top of her head off, strangely or something. But I think there's just that bit there, and the rest of it is fine. So I'm happy with my crop, I'm happy with my frame delay. Now I'm going to go and commit to my video timeline. I'm going to stretch this out now so I can see what I'm doing. I want to hit play and just run it through one more time to make sure. Yep, it looks good. Okay, I'm going to commit to this now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all my layers and I'm going to create a smart object. Just take my word for it right now that you want to create a smart object out of your layers. So just highlight them all and select them. Right click in that layer panel and click on convert to smart object. Now you just have one item in your layers and one item in your video timeline. Now the last step is to sharpen your video. Some people might say that that's actually an editing step, but I absolutely disagree. I, I think that sharpening is foundational and it should happen at this point. It should not be optional. Everyone should sharpen their damn gifts, so there you go. That's what I think. Go to Filter and down to Sharpen and you want to select Smart Sharpen. The main thing to be concerned with is the radius. Obviously, smaller radius means less sharpening, larger radius means more sharpening. When I'm working on large images that are 540 pixels wide, I tend to use 0.4 or 0.5 pixel radius. On the smaller size GIFs that are 268 pixels wide, I tend to use 0.3 or 0.4. It depends on the image, um, the quality, how much motion there is, because the sharpening is less effective when there's a lot of motion. Um, what the light is like, just a lot of different things. So, you know, you can get the preview though and see that's just hideous, don't do that. This one I'm gonna go with 0.4 pixels because she's moving a lot and that's, I don't think the extra point of a pixel is going to make a lot of difference. So I'll just say OK. And I'll just, if you turn it off, you can see everything looks slightly blurry now. And if I switch it back on, there's a lot more delineation in terms of the light sources and at the edges of things. I find that Smart Sharpen is particularly good at picking out the edges of light colored things and also metal. Metal comes up really nicely in Smart Sharpen. So that's Smart Sharpening. As I said, everyone should sharpen their gifts. I, this is a hill and I will die on it. Now the very last step is to export it. Go to File, Export, and Save for Web. The main thing you want to look at in this screen is down here, <laughs> which obviously this file is too large for Tumblr. The main contributor to your file size at this point is your percentage of dither. All the other options um, I, I never change, they just stay the way they are. Uh, this is kind of a final check down here and make sure your size is the way you want it. Make sure it's looping is on forever. Um, you can actually play it down here one more time just to make sure it looks okay. Um, click save. And here is my GIF. <laughs> So that is how I create my GIFs. It's not the only way, but for me, this is what makes the most sense out of a very unintuitive process. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the tutorial, please come talk to me on Tumblr. As I noted in several spots in the video, next time I'll be talking about a few more advanced parts of the process, as well as smart objects.